Don't look so grumpy. Hey ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we are going to be talking about putting in our fence. Hey everybody, if you're new to our channel, I'm Carrie and this is Doug. We just recently sold our house in Colorado and quit our jobs and took a risk, bought 40 acres here in Southeast Arizona and we are developing a homestead. If you are interested in that, we'd love if you subscribe and follow along. And of course, if you like our video, we would love a thumbs up. There's our tent up there. You can barely see it. There it is. We're down on the kind of the upper driveway that comes in Still working on clearing. It's pretty clear down here though and then the roads out here. All right, so our first day we got our our shade structure set up and we also flagged out our the four corners of our build site because we're going to be figuring up how we're going to be doing this because our build site for our house is on a slight slope and we're going to be doing um, retaining wall terraces and we just we need to figure that all out so we got the doggos over there and uh, we picked our trailer up yesterday as well as this ibc water tote this is going to be construction water it's not going to be potable water but we just cleared a spot off to the side of the driveway to park the trailer and we're getting ready to go down to the bottom of the driveway where our property line starts and start clearing for our property fence because we're going to do the whole the whole thing so it's beginning yay so we decided instead of working on clearing for the fence line we're going to actually work on just clearing out the bigger rocks that are on the driveway our our tractor guy did a really good job putting the road in, but there's a lot of rocks on our property. So we're going to go through, we've been just walking through, walking the driveway every day, every time we're here and picking out the big rocks that are um, in the tracks. So that's what we're working on right now. And Doug's, <laughs> he's got his loppers and uh, he's lopping any kind of big um, sticks that are sticking up that and then we're going to be we'll dig those out too just so they don't grow back because stuff grows pretty fast here we've noticed <laughs> which is good but um anyhow that's what we're working on this morning so we just went and picked up 15 rolls we're doing let's see if i can remember what it is it's 15 and a half gauge we we got the beckert b-e-k-a-e-r-t it's gaucho high strength barbed wire so it's the high tensile it's four point barbs and the barbs are five inches apart each one of these rolls is 1320 feet so i can't remember the math but i think it comes out to like 19,000 feet of barbed wire and then we bought this to make our rock cairns with we'll put a link in the description of what this stuff is called it's um welded wire reinforced steel so we bought 250 foot rolls of that, which should be enough to make our time. Hey, good morning. Doug and I are out here early. We started working on the fence and we decided to do the fence line that runs along the road first because we still need to get a few more tools and uh, we just thought we could keep the tools in the car right here and keep the dogs tied up. <laughs> so they're in the shade and just work our way up the road so that's what we're doing we figured we need another pair of these loppers that doug's got the real 24 inch long ones because because I, I had some little handheld shears that i was trying to use and they're just not burly enough <laughs> so anyway i'm going to show you what we've done so far so i'm standing in the road and this is the entrance to our the lower half of our U-shaped driveway and around and then up to where I think you can see maybe 
a blue anyway Actually. there's a blue tarp up there that you can kind of see so the driveway goes up there and then it meanders down this hill and it comes back out um, at the end of the cul-de-sac up there but anyway there was some fence posts that had already been placed here that have been here for a while and um, we decided just to stick with that setback we can actually here we can place our fence right on the lot line but we decided to set it back 15 feet just to be on the safe side we use these fence posts kind of as a guide to start kind of a true line and we bought this really bright orange string i think doug called it surveyor string and tied off the fence because what we're doing or so we get a true line and then we're clearing Doug mostly because I don't have a tool that's good enough, but we're clearing down the, the line of where the fence is going to be right here. We're going to string it out first and make sure we have a nice straight true line. We may start putting posts in or we may just do the other two sides that need to be fenced, but that's what we're working on today. Some areas of the property are really dense with brush like that, and those are the areas that are near washes. And then where Doug's working at right now, it's a little bit, little bit less dense. So it's a little bit easier going, but we should be able to get this side done. Our property has four sides. It's basically shaped like a kite and but a, but a kind of a funky shaped kite. But this side is the shortest side. It's about 500 or 600 feet long. I think we'll be able to get this done today as long as we don't run out of water. <laughs> Cause it's already getting pretty warm, but. All right, so that's what we're up to today. So you can see the string going down those posts. We're just moving the posts. We're not really placing posts right now. This is just a guide. But when we're done with this, we're gonna have a line that goes all the way up the hill. So we've got seven foot tall T posts. We ordered six foot, but maybe they were out and they gave us seven. Um, but anyway, doing them 20 feet apart. <laughs> Doug's getting his tan on and his burn on. And 20 feet apart because we're using high tensile barbed wire, which is a, a very strong barbed wire. And you don't have to normally, I think for barbed wire, you'd space it 10 feet apart, but we, we can do 20. And then we're gonna be doing rock cairns as our support or braces instead of um, like a wood brace because of the rockiness of the soil. I think we're gonna do those every, either every 60 feet or every 80 feet. So we'll wrap a cairn basket around the post and then fill it with rocks. Hey, it's day two of working on our fence. We're up at our upper driveway entrance. We're gonna be setting posts today. We got the, the fence line pretty much cleared yesterday and today is posts going in and this is where one of our entry gates will be. Any comment, Douglas? Nope. <laughs> you having fun pulling those posts out? Yep. <laughs> Old school. Yeah. Most everything we do is gonna be the hard way. What? <laughs> I said most everything we do is gonna be the hard way. <laughs> we gotta save our money for the important things. Exactly. We could get a gasoline operated fence post pounder, but this yeah. is the initial workout before we start sandbags. Yeah, exactly. So that's it for day two, working on the fence. We got all the fence posts set on the northeast side of the property, which is about 600 feet. It felt a lot longer than that. <laughs> But we got it done. We are Sparta. Oh my God. <laughs> the heat's getting to us. It's friggin' hot today. It's close to 100 and it's pretty much high noon, but we're almost done. So we've got, I think, two more posts to set. Doug's doing the setting because I can't reach that high. <laughs> it's nice in this real sandy soil. It's pretty easy for him to drive him in. Nicely done. So as we're clearing, we're trying to, trying to save as many trees as possible. We're trying to either go around them or trim them minimally. 
So keep as much green as possible. All right, day three on our fence. Uh, we're also out here to mark out. We've been doing some blueprint refinements on our on our home site. And so today we're going to mark out the measurements where we're gonna have a big excavator come and try to level out some of this we hill. I don't know when he's gonna be available, but uh, pretty reasonable price. Oh. Yeah, that hill behind us. That's our build site. It's our build site. But today, well, it's still early. We got out here about, what, 637? Yeah. And we're going to take a pole and go to the top of our hill, which is past the blue tarp there. And we are going to, we're going to use a GPS software so we can get our property line up there. And then we're gonna have this stake put in the ground. And then allegedly we can send Carrie down to that first corner post and we'll put out our, our surveyors uh, tape so that we know what to clear. So today's gonna be clearing the northwest side of the property. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll try to, we'll see how that goes because it's all rock. So I'm bringing a pickaxe with me and we'll see if we can set a post up on top. And if not, then we'll go to plan B. <laughs> so we were going to go down towards the road. We decided to go this the other way because the lot line corner is a little closer and we thought it'd be nice to get something done, meet, meet a corner together. So we're... What we're doing is we're using this string to make our make our fence line as straight as possible and then we've got our tape that we're measuring out and placing posts every 20 feet. Doug's getting ready to place one. <laughs> Don't threaten me with your caliche bar. That's actually called, they people call it a caliche bar, but it's also called a San Angelo bar. And I think there's another name for it too, but it's 17 pounds, so it's pretty heavy. And it's got two different ends to it. One's a, like a spear end, and one's more like a, you would use that maybe to leverage rocks up. I open a can of beans. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see you do that. So Doug's been kind of digging a pilot hole like you would for a screw um, with the cleachy bar. Get down closer and you'll see what we're dealing with. So hopefully my shadow's not blocking it, but... So you can see that. I mean, we're... Sometimes we get lucky and you get a gap. Yep. But most of the time we're like pulling up big slabs of cleachy, which yeah. is kind of funky. I don't know what to think of it yet because it's about six inches thick. And then there's something else underneath that. So I don't know what we're... But I'm happy to get six inches down because we're putting a rock at the base. And like I said, we're, uh, we're also putting the big carns. Yep. That will be like a thousand pounds each, so nothing's, this fence is staying up. Yep. Yeah. We got plenty of rock to work with on our property. The, our tractor guy said, yep, it's a rock pile, but. Yeah, we got so many rocks, we could literally build our house out of stone if we wanted to. Yeah, we could easily but build it. The a good thing is, off this little hill here, we have what I think is fertile soil, so. Yep. We just gotta work with nature, have our structures on stone, foundation, and then grow down in the valley. Yep. And divert all the water into channels that will go down, swales and diversion swales down to the garden place where we plant out. And if we do plant anything up here, it'll be in the courtyard and in raised beds, so. All right, take it home, Douglas. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. You didn't know about this little tool on the end. You're crooked. It's a T-post bender. Like this. Twister. And you can torque it. Yeah. Sometimes you hit rocks and it, it makes the post twist the wrong bit. direction. There we go. So we're so. all straightened up now. Dropping little rocks in there. Yep. Burst and dirt. And we talked to a guy at the tractor supply and he said in the desert basically it, you can just set these in six inches and they're not going anywhere after the first rain yeah because the there's so much clay in our soil 
when it gets wet, it's just going to harden up nice. Well, this and this is just the initial post setting. When we go back and we'll go back and kind of fortify these, like Doug said, some of them are going to get rock cairns built up. So basically, cairns are rock pillars. So we we got the fencing that goes around it in a circle, and then you just fill it full of you make a basket and then just fill it full of rocks. We got plenty of those, as you can see up here. <laughs> It's less rocks the lower down you go on our property, but up here it's just rock, which is fine. We'll work with it. So we've been working out here for about, oh, maybe a couple hours, and we've gotten a, some posts set. This is the second highest point on our property, which is northeast facing, and um, we got a lot of clearing to do as we place these posts. We've made it this far. So the hard part about this is uh, we can only go down about six inches with these posts and then we hit the caliche layer and that was to be expected. I was going to get a, uh, what do you call those drills, the uh, impact, drill? impact drill and put in rebar and put in silicone and all that stuff and then strap the bars to it. But I decided we're going to do something like this here where we just base rock we get it in as far as we can six inches and then we put up rock around the base and eventually like i said every like six of these posts every five of these posts is going to have a stone carn so i think that once the barbed wire is on there it's all going to be rigid anyway so i'll be all good we're going to continue down we're going to try to connect to the road today but that might not happen who knows <laughs> just keep going Yep, the road's down that way, so we'll see how far we make it before we start frying. So this is the uncleared side. We're going, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a white pole. Whoop, <laughs> there's a white pole way down there. Maybe I can zoom in. Oh, there you can see it right above Doug's head there, that white piece of PVC. So that's the uncleared side, and then that's the cleared fence line. It's a lot of work. These bushes are not very skin friendly so this post is pretty significant it is where our corner post meets the rancher's post which is an old probably 100 year old barbed wire two prong five inch barbed wire and there's one of our survey markers right here and we are well within our boundaries, have finally gone all the way up to the top of the hill. The hill was definitely going to be the hardest part for us because of the rock, but we managed to get it through. Um, down here is kind of interesting because this is where one of our huge washes begins on our property. So when we begin doing water management, which we'll be doing heavily here, we're going to be starting right here on our fence line and working our way down this wash. A couple washes here, but this is how we will slow down the water. We will slow and sink it up here is where it all began. So you start putting in pools and diversion swales and everything and diverting it so it doesn't rush down this thing and down into the bigger wash and wash out our road. Instead, it'll slowly go down and gently and eventually we'll put swales that will even capture some more water and wrap it around the topography of both these hills, this hill here and this hill here. And that's a future video and we're far from getting to water management but uh, it is in our mind before we build we've already figured out this stuff uh, using printed out topography maps topographic maps and we've found where our low spots are our high spots and where we could add management into it all but we are pretty happy that we finally got a 500 foot stretch on the northwest side and tomorrow the rest of the day we gotta go and map out and measure and flag the homestead site because we have a few little things we need to be having done before the excavator gets here and we think he's coming tomorrow but when he gets here we'll finish the other side of this fence do another 100 500 feet down the other side and all will be good we have like a 2,000 foot stretch of fence to do and we have yet to even 
put the barbed wire on these. This is just clearing it out and putting the posts in. So today, I think is day six, working on the fence. Up the top of that hill right there, you can kind of see there's a cleared area. We we finished up, up there and then we came back down, down the driveway and hauled all our stuff down here, all the posts, and now we're starting from the street side. Dogs are in the car, cooling off. I think Zoe got bit again by maybe a fire ant. She's been acting like it and she I saw some ants by her so anyway little tiny Zoe is cooling off with Willow so we're gonna make our way up the hill with the posts and I'm kind of clearing and Doug's clearing and driving posts and hoping to connect these two sides today we're making some progress it's getting pretty hot though Basically, Doug's driving posts and I'm clearing along the fence line really thick along this brush. Probably have another 100 feet to go to connect the other end that we were working on. So we're getting there. It's not a perfectly straight fence, but we're doing that to try to avoid, like there was a big pack rat nest and he decided to avoid that. And we're trying to not take out as many bushes as possible or trees, we're trying to leave as many as possible. So it's a little bit of a crooked fence, but that's all right.